In today's lesson, we will learn about the image segmentation, which is one of the hard in the computer vision application to prune out uh, object of interest in the image. <coughs> so basically, uh, we can think about the uh, segmentation process is a way to find uh, some uh, specific portion of the image that contain object of interest. So for this particular case, let's look at the very Waldo uh, problem. So for the very small the problems, the issue is that uh, we are given the picture of Waldo. So it's more something like the photograph uh, uh, passport pictures in which uh, the, the subject is facing forward the cameras. So uh, the aim <coughs> for the very small the game is that uh, find in the given image, what is the location of Waldo? So uh, the same things, uh, let's see if for the human eye, <coughs> implementation so uh, what we do is that we can slide through the image and then later on uh, from the uh, slide location we find where is the corresponding location of the welder so the same thing uh, with the computer vision so what the computer do is that it will start the image from the top left uh, to the bottom right so in this case <coughs> Usually in computer vision, the segmentation process will utilize what we call as the kernel. Kernel is some sort of the uh, windows with a small dimension, non dimension, and then the kernel will be slide through the image until we find object of interest. So if you can see from this particular uh, case that we are given some sort of the image of the world in uh, from uh, the angle of which the subject of interest is uh, facing the cameras whereas in the real implementation in this image searching so <coughs> the subject is actually not directly from passing the from passing the camera so there is a the, the things in terms of the challenge in the computation in which uh, you are given some sort of the image which uh, in a different orientation you need to find the things in the the pool of objects inside of the image so this is quite a simple problem Usually in the uh, real application of the computer visions, so what we do is that we are given the sort of the image, and then for this particular case, so let's say we just recap back the same problem in which uh, what is the location of the well though. So in this particular case, we need to slide the kernel through the image and then find the uh, exact location, in which if the computer cannot find the the object of interest, then we just pass this image and then give some sort of response that uh, there is no object of interest uh, that we are looking inside of this particular image so uh, in <coughs> simple sort of the application the segmentation means that you just uh, given some sort of the subject of interest and then you slide you find the object of interest inside of the image uh, we contain a pool of other objects and then we highlight that particular area uh, in which uh, the the location of the object resides recite and then give the exact uh, coordination of the object of interest so uh, the issue is that uh, what is image segmentation so in general image segmentation uh, in some sort of the formal notation is a pattern recognition problem that is uh, considered as the object isolation object isolation means that object isolation is we isolate object of interest from the background so usually uh, image segmentation is the first part in the computer vision uh, in which uh, you are given the series of input image. So the first part is uh, the aim of computer vision is to, uh, <coughs> to reduce the dimension of image that we need to process later on. So let's say uh, this is our original input image and then after we perform the image segmentation process. So there is some tendency that uh, we just interested in small portion of area. So this part of area will be extracted and then passed to the higher level processing for the feature extraction for the classification and etc. <coughs> so basically the image segmentation is uh, difficult. It can be for because of uh, some sort of the reason. So the first thing is the non-uniform illumination. So this is the condition where uh, our light, especially in the outdoor environment, so the source of the illumination can be from different angles. So that's one of the issues if we try to find the correct location, uh, exact location because of the illumination we cause the image of interest, object of interest uh, in terms of the uneven illumination distribution throughout the image. 
Second is the no control of the environment. So for instance, uh, in one particular environment that you monitor, so there is some tendency that a new object can be introduced to the environment or the, the object in the environment will be removed. So uh, the algorithm should be able to cope with such constraint uh, to perform the segmentation process. So the third thing is the inadequate model of the object of interest. So let's say in some situation, uh, the object, the, the pattern from the object is almost the same with the environment. So for that particular case, what is the, the best method uh, to distinguish between the foreground and the background? And then another thing is the noise. So this is uh, the common issues. So most of the common issues, uh, the noise can come from the, uh, the camera itself. Uh, it can come from the inadequate light. So for that particular case, you can see more uh, grainy image. So the let's say uh, one thing is in terms of the uh, camera, the camera can cause the image become blur. So for that particular reason, what is the, the, the method that is suitable to perform the segmentation process? So uh, the segmentation is useful because uh, this is the heart for many of the algorithms here. So let's say for the optical character recognition, we wish to extract the text from the, uh, the form. Second is the automatic target acquisition, so it be more on the tracking. So we we pinch the pinpoint the location of the object of interest and then start tracking that thing. So pinpoint the location means that we perform the segmentation process. The uh, colorization of motion pictures. So this is more on the uh, let's say uh, we have the 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 green screen. So uh, the object of interest. So we need to. Uh, locate or we need to uh, put some sort of the background in the green screen to ensure that uh, the the picture will be much more uh, alive in terms of the uh, in terms of the uh, implement application wise so the fourth thing is the detection measurement so uh, there is some sort of the medical problem let's say uh, we need to locate the bone location in the x-ray image uh, we need to uh, in CT scan image. So what is the location with respect to the bone? Extract that things and then uh, remove the layer only uh, with respect to the bone and etc. So there is some sort of the uh, application for the image segmentation. So in general, the image segmentation can be divided into two main categories, which is the uh, contextual and then secondly is the non-contextual. So uh, non-contextual means that. Uh, the algorithm will ignore the relationship between the features in the image so uh, this is uh, in general we call that thing as the global method so the name of the global method means that in general we just use a single value in order to perform the segmentation process throughout the image the second algorithm is the contextual uh, technique so contextual means that uh, it will exploit the relationship between image features so uh, in general, the contextual techniques, we call that thing as the local method. So in a simple elementum, local methods means that you will use the different type of uh, threshold value, different type of method in order to perform the segment process, segmentation process in every uh, different location inside of the image. So in general, uh, method to do the segmentation can be divided into three major categories so the first one is based on the thresholding method thresholding method means that it's just uh, we pick up some sort of the simple threshold value and then that threshold value will be utilized in order to uh, separate the foreground from the background so the same thing for, for this particular case we have the grayscale image in the left side and then in the right side we have just the binary image in which uh, in this case uh, perhaps the the black will be the foreground and then the white will be the background so the second method is uh, edge based segmentation edge based means that we just highlight uh, in terms of the edge information uh, inside of the image and then uh, these particular features uh, can be utilized in order to perform a higher level processing such as the uh, object detection uh, object recognition and etc then the final one is based on the region-based segmentation so for the region-based segmentation means that uh, we introduce some sort of the seed point let's say this is the seed point and then this type of region will be grow throughout the particular region so for this particular algorithm so we need uh, to know the seed point whether the seed point can be manually uh, tagging or it can be it can be automatic tagging so that uh, this seed point can be grow throughout the region and that it will be used to 
uh, find the similarity between of that particular area and then uh, extract that uh, area of interest only. So uh, we will focus on the first method first, which is the thresholding. This is one of the simplest method, yet it's one of the uh, widely used method for uh, separating between the foreground and the background inside of the image. So basically, for the threshold method, uh, first method we will focus on the non-contextual, which is uh, this is the global method. So in general, the simple way is that we have the input image here. So let's say this is the uh, grayscale image. We have some object inside of the grayscale image. And then the next part is that uh, usually we perform the threshold process uh, from the, uh, from the uh, image histogram. So image histogram is just uh, the distribution of the pixel inside of the image. So let's say uh, if we have some sort of the this image, two by two image, let's say this is uh, two, three, two, four, this is, this is the pixel value. So the histogram distribution for this particular image is that uh, for the pixel number two, we have two. For the pixel number three, we have one. And then for the pixel number four, we have just one bit. So this is the uh, histogram distribution. So the same thing for this particular image. Uh, so we model the histogram of this particular image in which usually the value will be ranging from 0 to 255. So then uh, the next part is that we can select any value from 0 to 255 that can be used uh, to separate the foreground from the background. So for this particular case, usually uh, the threshold value will be selected uh, from this particular region of interest. So once we select the value, then the value will be used in order to uh, in order to threshold or in order to uh, decide whether this each point whether this point if the point is lower than the threshold, then it belongs to the background. If the point is higher than the uh, given threshold value, then it will be long to the foreground. So this is the basic concept of the image thresholding, which is quite straightforward. So one of the biggest issues in the thresholding process is picking the threshold is very hard. So uh, for instance, uh, sometimes the human operator will set the threshold. So we need to select between 0 to 255. Five. What is the suitable optimal value that can be used in order to uh, to extract the object of interest, the foreground from this image. And then the hardest part is that if we change different picture, so we said we need to decide also again, what is the, the suitable threshold value. So it will be something like the repeating process for different image, we need to decide what is the threshold value. So some of the things that has been uh, introduced to automate the process of picking the threshold is by using the mean gray level of the image. So means that we have the image and then first we find what is the uh, the average gray value uh, for the whole image and then use that thing as the threshold value. So, uh, so uh, there is one thing that uh, some sort of the method that just uh, pick up a, a thick a proportion of the pixel uh so this is uh, more on the some sort of the we select some of the uh the constant value and then uh set to one if the value higher than the predetermined uh, threshold and then zero if it is the uh zero will be belongs to the background and then uh this is one of the elegant method this is one of the uh method that we will use to find the threshold means that we will uh, perform the histogram analysis to determine what is the optimal value of the threshold that can be utilized uh, to detect threshold value for every uh, given image it, and it will be done automatically. Uh, this is uh, some of the uh, video that I have prepared uh, to show you that uh, the selection of uh, appropriate uh, threshold value is important to ensure that uh, each uh, different value will corresponding to different output image. So you can see from this video uh, some sort of the, the, the evolution or when we change uh, the value what will be effect uh, in the output. Uh, in this video I will show you on what is the effect of selecting different threshold value with respect to the uh, segmented outcome. So in this example, we have the input image in which we can change the value of the threshold, and then this is the uh, result. Um, 
when we select different threshold value so another point or another thing that we need to highlight here is the image histogram in which for this uh, image the red area denote the histogram distribution and then the white sorry the yellow line here is actually the threshold that we select you can see here as i move the threshold from zero uh, to 30 so the corresponding line will also move so uh, what i want to show you is that as i slide the threshold from left to the right so as the threshold line touch the histogram distribution you can see we have uh, some sort of the output binary image as a result of we select this particular uh, threshold value so as we move uh, the threshold near the belly central or belly between two peaks you can see from here a uh, much better outcome of the thresholded image and then later on if we still increase the value up until to the next bit so you can see the outcome is highly contaminated with noise and then as we move along the way so the output image becomes uh, black so this is actually the effect when we want to select the optimal threshold value so in general at the rule of thumb if you want to select the proper threshold value you need to select the threshold that is uh, in the belly in between of the peaks if you select in the peak area it's either the output image is incomplete or a lot of noise will uh, contaminate the uh, outcome thank you so you basically you have seen the video regarding uh, the selection of the different threshold value will uh, give you the different type of output so means that the proper selection of the threshold must lies in the valley which is in between of the two peaks so uh, basically for the uh, thresholding uh, method in terms of the histogram analysis there are uh, basically three types of uh, threshold pattern that uh, you will see in the image so the first pattern is basically uh, this particular pattern in which you have uh, two peaks and then uh, at the same time you have one valley. So in this particular case, we can uh, select uh, some sort of the threshold value in between of the two peaks which is in the valley that can be utilized to, uh, to separate the foreground from the background. So uh, this is uh, some example of the image uh, that are <coughs> in line with this type of the histogram distribution. The second type of the histogram is based on this thing. Uh, so we, in this particular case, we have more than one valley. So for this particular case, uh, three peaks and then two valley. So the value of the threshold can be uh, selected uh, from uh, each of the valley. So in this case, we have two. Uh, in some situation, maybe more than two. So uh, it can be the selection of threshold value can be either uh, either t lower than t1 or higher than t1 or it can be in between of the t1 and t2 or higher than t2 so it really highly depending on the application in which what you want to highlight so uh, some of the example of the image uh, that in line with this type of distribution is something like this so previously you just seen uh, some image with uh, some uh, pink uh, picture in this particular case there is some additional uh, object inside of the image in which uh, in the purple color so for this particular case this is some situation that we have the background we have uh, some object of interest in different color and we have another object of interest uh, with also in the different color distribution so the third case is one of the hardest case in the uh, image segmentation you will see some sort of the, this type of distribution histogram distribution so for this particular case we have some sort of the valley but uh, the valley is not really distinct that uh, in this particular case uh, touch the principal axis so for this particular reason it's quite hard to pick up uh, what is the location of interest for the threshold location so uh, in this case uh, we cannot use the global method so for the first two case 
the case one and then case two we can use the global method this is we can use the global method so for this particular case we may you see this type of the histogram distribution so for this particular case we need to use what we call as the local method which is the contextual method so uh, some of the example of the image is something like this so if you can see from here this is quite pretty standard image but uh, the image uh, is actually over exposed in this particular area and underexposed in this area sorry and then uh, underexposed in this area so now what is the the direct method to perform the threshold algorithm so that we can just highlight the text and then remove the background so this is some sort of the uh, pretty standard method on how we can use the uh, global threshold method so in general we have some sort of the image and then convert that thing to the histogram distribution and then from the histogram distribution analyze the location with respect to the uh, analog analog location of the valley uh, in the histogram distribution in which you can select uh, any value in between of this value as long as the value is inside the valley can be used in order to distinguish between the foreground and the background so for this particular case if we select the value of threshold equal to 120 and then we able to uh, distinguish the foreground with respect to the background so uh, in a situation that uh, our image is not the grayscale which is we have the uh, the color image so for that particular case, let's say we have the uh, RGB image. So what we can do in order to perform the segmentation is based on what we call as the color distance measure. So color distance measure is uh, pretty uh, straightforward means that for each of the channel. So in this case, we have the red channel, we have the green channel and also we have the blue channel. So uh, the same thing with our target object of interest and also the uh, the the image that we will use to separate the the information of interest so in this case let's say if we interested to extract just the red color so in terms of the rgb red color uh, is 25500 and then we have the image bunch of image in this case we have the three channel image which is the rgb so we can perform the color distance measure by using this formulation uh, it's quite uh, pretty straightforward means that uh, pixel here minus whatever pixel that you can find here and then uh, square that thing so plus the second channel information and then plus the third channel information and then uh, sum up everything and then finally uh, square root of the color so you can obtain the color of interest from this particular image so this is some sort of the example so in this case we have the uh, color sample A with a pixel value of 250 and 35 and then uh, need, we need to decide so this color belong to which cluster either cluster B1, cluster B2 or cluster B3 so uh, if you have just a single channel of the image it's quite easy means that you can use just uh, first this information let's say uh, we focus on the first channel we can just focus on the uh, first channel information and then uh, perform the color similarity straight away however for the end channel we can use the uh, color distance measure notation so for this particular case what we need to do is that let's say for the first case we can uh, straight away uh, extract this thing subtract the subject of interest with respect to the uh, given cluster b1 and then uh, once we do the uh, simple process of the color distance measure we obtain the value of 54 for the first case and then for the move to the second case we perform the same process and then we obtain the uh, another value which is in this case 28.7 and then finally for the third clusters we obtain the uh, another value which is 32 so now uh, once we do the uh, we calculate the distance measure so in general what we need to do is that uh, so the aim of the distance color measure is we want to find uh, object is quite similar in the clusters so means that is if the object is uh is 100 percent similar to the cluster means that the distant color distance measure value will be zero so what we need to find here you need to find the minimum value of the calculated distant color measure so for this particular case uh the minimum one is the 28.7 so we can say that the cluster b2 
since the cluster base 2 show the uh, lowest distant color measure, so we can say that sample A belongs to the cluster B2. So this is uh, some sort of the uh, example, straightforward uh, example on how we can use uh, the threshold process to find the color uh, information in the three channel image. <coughs> However, there is some situation that uh, you need to consider to perform some normalization. So for this particular case, let's say we have uh, this type of uh, sample and then we want to find whether these samples belong to the cluster B1 or cluster B2. So if you can see from here, if you look at the cluster B1, so uh, cluster B1, if you compare for the first channel, we can say that uh, it will be most likely belongs to B2. If you look at, at the second channel, uh, 500 to 450, so we can say that uh, the second channel most likely belongs to the B2. Uh, whereas in the third channel for this particular case, uh, it will most likely belongs to P1. So uh, both two channels will belong to B2 and only one channel belongs to P1. But uh, if we just straight away use the color distance measure method in order to calculate the, uh, the, th the threshold value, the similarity value between these two samples, this is what we will determine. So for the cluster of B1, we will obtain the uh, value of 3006, whereas for the cluster B2, we will obtain this type of information in which are uh, 15,000. So based on the direct calculation, uh, we can say that the cluster B1 is more near to the, uh, sorry, the sample A belongs to the cluster B1. Whereas uh, if you can see from a uh, straightway calculation, uh, sorry, you can see from the uh, straightway uh, channel differentiation, we can see that B2 is more belonging to the cluster, uh, sorry, sample A. So, uh, the issue is that for this particular case, <coughs> since the third value uh, is bigger, so it will be dominate the calculation of the distant color measure process. So how we able to overcome this process? So in this case, we need to perform what we call as the data normalization. So data normalization, usually the meaning is that we normalize every data here so that it will be ranging uh, in between of 0 to 1 so that uh, all the channels will be in almost the similar data arrangement. So we can do perform the normalization by using this type of the notation. So for this particular case, x is the input value, and then uh, mu is the mean value, and this is the over the variance. This is the variance, uh, and then a square root of everything. So this is the denormalization process. So uh, let's say we repeat the same thing the same calculation uh, we have this type of the input sample and then we have two cluster b1 and b2 so once we perform the uh, normalization so uh, for the whole image for the whole samples uh, this is the calculation of the mean and variance so how we able to obtain the means so for this particular case uh, for the first channel 0 0.3 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.35 over 3 so this is the the, the method how I obtained here 0 0.28 and then the same thing for 550 and 29,000. So uh, all the samples, regardless the belongs to the clusters or belong to the object of interest, we just find the means and then later on we can find the variance. You can easily find the variance by using the calculator, just plug in all the information and then you can obtain this type of the mean and variance. So once we obtain both information, so this is the time that we can use this uh, the normalization equation. So once we plug in everything, so this is the uh, new value of the A, B, uh, B1 and B2. But uh, this is the value that is uh, almost, the ranging will be almost the same uh, between the first channel, second channel and third channel. So you can see the distribution of the value uh, around 0 to 1. Instead of this thing, uh, the lowest is 0 0.3, the highest will be 35,000. So the, the difference is quite big. So after we perform the normalization uh, process, so the value will be ranging around uh, 0 to 1 or 2, something like this. So once we normalize uh, the data, so the next part is that we can uh, do the distant color measure calculation. So in this particular case, we obtain uh, from the first uh, cluster, we obtain the 1.39. 
and then the second cluster is 1.066 so in this particular case after we perform the normalization process so we can say that the cluster belong the sample of object a is uh, most probably most likely belongs to the cluster b2 in which is quite correct in terms of the each uh, channel uh, data analysis so uh, this is uh, just a simple introduction uh, of the threshold process in the color space and then also uh, how we perform the data normalization to ensure that uh, our range of data will is almost the same for every sample so that we can uh, use the uh, standard pretty standard calculation uh, to find the similarity between the data So uh, in some situation, uh, we are given with not just a single cluster, but we are given with the uh, sample of the data. So uh, let's say our previous sample, we have data A and then we have data B1 and then B2. So in some situation, uh, data B1 can be, uh, we have uh, three or four samples belong to data B1. You see, in this case, we have four samples. And then B2, we have another, uh, sorry, B1, five samples, and then B2, four samples. So for this particular case, if let's say we just uh, calculate new data with respect to the every sample inside of the cluster, it will be very time consuming. So what we do is that for every sample here, we need to find the distribution, the top distribution. And then once we find the distribution, so we can use what we call as the Mahalanobis uh, distance measure in order to find similarity between A and cluster B1 and B2. So how we perform the uh, Mahalanobis? Mahalanobis can be calculated by using this uh, formula. So for this case is X is the input and then this is the mean uh, information. So this is a uh, Mahalanobis distance calculation uh, for uh, more than one dimension image. Uh, sorry, more than one dimension information. So this is the input, this is the mean, and then this is the transpose. Uh, so this is the inverse covariance metric information. And then uh, this is the same thing, which is the input minus the mean. So in the case of the 1D, uh, the calculation is straightforward. This is uh, most likely almost the same with the data normalization process in which we have the input minus the mean over the uh, variance and then a square root of everything. So in this case, the this data distribution will be represented as mean and variance. So the same thing with the second data distribution, we will represent that thing as a mean uh, and also the uh, as a mean and also the variance. So we have the mean 1, variance 1 belongs to the cluster B1 and then uh, mean 2 and cluster 2 belongs to the uh, cluster B2. So we just have this, we will use the information of this distribution and then uh, since A we have the value here which is in this case we have let's say X. So uh, we just need to uh, find the distance by using this distribution information and then we can use the Mahalanobis distance measure in order to find the similarity between these two data distribution. So this is some uh, simple uh, straightforward example in which uh, for this particular case uh, for the sample A we have the value of mean is 25 and variance is 15 and then uh, another sample B we have the mean of the 100 and then variance is 25. So for this particular case we are given uh, three different data set, three different data in which S1 uh, value is 53 S2 is 58 and then S3 is 62. So the equation is that uh, we need to perform the matching process whether S1 belongs to the sample A or B. The same thing with the S2 belongs to A or B and then the same thing with the S3. So we can do that thing by using the distant uh, Mahalanobis distance color measure. So for this particular case, the process is straightforward. Uh, this is our equation which is this is the input minus the mean over the variance. So just plug in our, let's say for the uh, S1, our input value is 53. So 53 minus the sample A, mean is 25, and then the variance is 15, just straight away. Plug in that thing. So in this case, we have the calculation for of the Mahalanobis distance measure uh, with respect to the sample A and sample B for the first data, S1. So uh, for this particular case, we can say that uh, the sample 1, 
here belongs to the uh, cluster A. Because of what? Because of the value is the lowest uh, between uh, this calculation. So straight away for the sample number 2, the value is 58, 58 and then uh, the same thing, we just repeat the same process which is this is the mean, this is the variance. So the first calculation is uh, 8.52, the second one is 8.4. So in this particular case, uh, this is the, the lowest value. So we can say that uh, sample 2 belongs to the uh, cluster B. And then uh, for the final one, the same thing. Uh, a and B, so we can say that uh, the data belong to the uh, cluster uh, B. Sample 3 belongs to the cluster B. So this is uh, some simple calculation on how we are able to implement the Mahalalo based system measures uh, in order to calculate the one dimension information. So uh, finally, if we extend the equation into the more uh, high dimension, means that uh, two dimension and etc. So for that particular case, we need to use this type of the formula in order to perform the calculation in which the same thing, we have the input here uh, minus the main. This is the covariance because we have more than one dimension data. Uh, and then this is the inverse covariance. Uh, so the same thing, this is input and this is the main. So for this particular case, uh, let's say we have some uh, researcher uh, that collect uh, five samples. So this is sample one, sample two, sample three, sample four, sample five. And then uh, each of the sample constitute of the height information, uh, score information, and age information. So the question is that uh, determine the mahal based distance measure of the new sample of SX. So we are uh, we have this uh, new sample which is SX. So we want to calculate uh, what is the mahal based distance uh, measure output uh, from this. Uh, new sample set with respect to the given uh, data distribution here S1 to S5. So for this particular case, uh, our value of interest is here which is 160, 550 and 35 and then this is our uh, sample distribution. So uh, how we are able to perform this equation which is in this case the same thing. I made some uh, simple adjustment of the notation which is the x is the input, m is the mean, uh, c is the covariance, this is the inverse covariance. Okay. So uh, the first step is calculate uh, the mean value. So the mean value can be calculated uh, from the uh, object of, sorry, the sample distribution. So in this case the mean value will be calculated with respect to the sample distribution. So it means that uh, 162.6 is the mean value for the height, uh, 576 is the mean value of the score, and then uh, 37.2 is the mean value of the age. So that is the first step. So the second step is that we need to calculate the covariance. Covariance means that uh, this is the variance value for every data, x, y, and z. And then this is the correlation of x and y. This is the same thing. That's why we call that thing as the covariance. We said this is the correlation between uh, x and z. So uh, we just calculate the covariance matrix. So the next part is we need to just perform the inverse covariance of the uh, obtained matrix. And then we can obtain something here. So the next part is pretty straightforward. It means that uh, we calculate x minus m. So this is our x and then this is our m, just calculate x minus m, so we will obtain this part of the equation. And then uh, pre-multiply, so x minus m times the inverse covariance matrix, so we will obtain this value. And then finally, uh, plug information regarding the x minus m transpose, so finally we obtain the this type of the uh, value, which is in this case is 8.7469078. And then finally, what we do is that we perform the square root of this particular value. So the mahal based distance measure uh, calculation uh, for this particular case is 2.6, uh, sorry, 2.96 for this particular case. So uh, if you go to the higher dimension calculation of the mahal based distance, so it means that the calculation will be a bit complicated. So for this particular case, I use Excel to uh, perform the calculation. Uh, especially in terms of the calculation of the covariance and then inverse covariance matrix. 
So, uh, as you go to the higher dimension, means that uh, we need to prof uh, use some sort of the uh, since the calculation become more complex. So, uh, you need to use uh, some tools in order to execute the process. So, that is in terms of the uh, calculation of the uh, mahal based system measure for the one dimension case and also for the n dimensional case. Uh, dimensional case. So uh, in the next part, I will focusing on the uh, the other method, which is uh, the global method. Uh, how we can perform the global method uh, to find the automatic threshold values uh, for the given image. Thank you.